Courtney having a baby. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Courtney. This is my 24 week bump date. Today I am 24 weeks pregnant. Today baby is the size of an eggplant. That is huge. 24 weeks obviously marks viability from what I have heard. So that is extremely exciting that from now on, every week that passes, she has a better chance of surviving if she was to be born. So that makes me very happy. So firstly, I'll just jump into the few symptoms that I have for this week. The first symptom is itchy skin, specifically on my belly and sometimes on my boobs. I'm assuming that's due to the stretching of the skin. I've been using Palmer's Coco Stretch Mark Cream from day one since I found out that I'm pregnant. I use that every night after a shower. However, I'm still getting itchy skin and you'll probably see in my bump shot like where I've been scratching my stomach. But that's just one of the newish symptoms that has kind of shown up in the last week. My next symptom is sore back and hips. This symptom is specific to when I sleep on my left side, which if you know much about pregnancy is the preferred side to sleep on. It's apparently the safest side to sleep on. So I wake up a lot during the night with my back and my hips absolutely killing me and I have to turn over onto my right side because I'm in so much pain. I sleep with a pillow in between my legs and I also sleep with a pregnancy pillow under my tummy as well to try and combat that but it doesn't seem to be working and I don't know what else to do. So if you have any tips on that that would be absolutely wonderful because I feel like I've done everything I can to kind of prevent that. I know sleeping on your back isn't great, but that's the most comfortable position for me. So I've been sleeping on my left side with a pillow behind me to avoid me rolling onto my back in the middle of the night without knowing while I'm sleeping. 90% of the time I'm sleeping on my left side and then the other 10% I'm sleeping on my right side. My next symptom is strong fingernails. It's crazy. I have never had fingernails this long and strong before. I've never really had to clip them. They usually just break and then I file them. I like smooth it out with a file. But they're just so strong. The other day I actually had to clip them because they were getting too long. That's a really nice pregnancy symptom. I also still have thicker hair as well. It doesn't look thick but compared to what it used to be, it does look thick because I have really fine gross hair and it's just been a welcome change to have a little bit more thickness to it. So one thing that has been in the works for a couple of weeks if you've been watching my updates is that I've been trying to get limited flying hours at work. For those of you who don't know, I'm a flight attendant and for our business class sectors, I have been struggling to get through those flights. On normal airlines, you have one flight attendant assigned to about eight business class passengers and that's the only passengers that that flight attendant has to look after during the flight. However, because I work for a charter company, we have some specific flights that are full business class. Each passenger gets a business class service and there's up to 80 passengers and there's only two of us. It's a really full on three hours. Sometimes it's over three hours and I wasn't getting time to sit down or drink or eat or go to the bathroom. So I really was just trying to limit the flying hours to avoid getting those particular flights. We have other flights that I'm completely able to do because they're shorter sectors and the services aren't as full on. I spoke to my boss and I spoke to my OBGYN and I finally worked something out that worked for both of us. Originally, I asked for some work on the ground, which is generally what they do for pregnant flight attendants. However, for some reason, they've told me that they don't have any work available for me on the ground. So she suggested that I go on maternity leave now which would mean that I would spend the remainder of my pregnancy not getting paid, which 
to be completely honest, we can't afford that. That wasn't ideal for us. So that's why I spoke to my OB and I told my boss that that wasn't ideal and we couldn't afford to do that. And I now have a doctor's certificate that limits me to doing two sectors per day and each sector can't exceed two hours. So I am going to be doing those flights up until 29 weeks of pregnancy and then I have six weeks of annual leave which gets me through to 35 weeks of pregnancy and after that you cannot fly. And this is where I'm currently hitting a wall with my job and speaking to my boss and trying to see what I'm entitled to basically. She has told me that there is no work for me after the 35 week mark which leaves me with five weeks of not being paid, which we probably could do if we scrimped and scraped and saved. However, ideally, if I'm feeling fit to work on the ground, I would like to have that option. So I have looked into it a little bit further with Fair Work Australia and the Queensland government. And according to their websites, I'm entitled to something called no safe job leave. So basically what that means is if your job is not safe to do while you are pregnant, for example, flying as a flight attendant, you can't really be flying at 35 weeks of pregnancy. Your work has to try their hardest to give you work on the ground. And if they can't do that, you are entitled to something called no safe job leave. This is different per job as well. Like you have to be full time and you have to be have to have been working with the company for a certain amount of time so there are a lot of things that play into that however I am completely eligible because I am full-time and I've been flying for five years with the same company I am completely entitled to this no safe job leave so I have sent my boss an email today basically saying that this is what the Queensland government website says and it's a paragraph that basically states that if they are unable to provide me with a safe job on the ground up until I give birth, they are required to pay me for no safe job leave. I'm entitled to paid leave up until I give birth, which I was completely unaware of until one of my friends mentioned it to me and suggested that I look further into it, which I have done. I have sent my boss that email this morning. I haven't checked to see if she's responded. I'm a little bit scared <laughs> to see what her response is going to be. Hopefully we can work something out. I'm assuming that they're not going to want to pay me for that five weeks for doing nothing. So I'm guessing that groundwork is magically going to appear for me now so that I can work on the ground and get paid for it or she'll probably just flat out refuse and there's not much I can do about that besides take it further and take legal action which I'm not 100% sure that I'm willing to do just because that could get quite expensive. Anyway, I kind of went off in a tangent there. <laughs> this is supposed to be my bump date and it ended up turning into work talk. That is pretty much all that's happened this week however. Next week I have my glucose test. I think it's the gestational diabetes test so hopefully my next bump date will be a little bit more exciting not a lot has happened in the last few weeks other than work dramas okay guys i'll go ahead and show you my 24 week bump Okay guys, thank you so much for watching my 24 week bump date. If you haven't already subscribed, you can subscribe below if you would like to follow our journey and I will talk to you soon. Bye!